In this video, we'll discuss 19 actors currently rotting in jail and the reasons why. Danny Masterson Danny Masterson made headlines this year and not for his acting skills. That 70s show actor was sentenced to 30 years to life in prison for sexually assaulting two women at his Hollywood Hills home during the period of 2001 to 2003. Masterson received his sentence just four months after being found guilty of two out of three sexual assault charges in a Los Angeles retrial. He had been charged with sexually assaulting two women, known in court as Jane Doe No. 1 and Jane Doe No. 2, but not Jane Doe No. 3, since the jurors could not reach a decision. All of the victims attended the same Church of Scientology where Masterson is a member. Although the judge stressed that the church is not a defendant, she allowed the victims to talk about the church officials, pressuring them to conceal the incident from police. Masterson, who was a well-known sitcom star in the past, chose not to testify in either of his trials. He consistently denied the allegations of sexual assault through his lawyers. All three women, one of whom was his former girlfriend, were applauded for taking the stance. Jane Doe 1 called the actor a true coward and a heartless monster. Jane Doe No. 3 told the judge that she has been diagnosed with PTSD. Mr. Masterson, I know that you're sitting here steadfast in your claims of innocence and thus no doubt feeling victimized by a justice system that has failed you," Los Angeles County Superior Court Judge Charlene Olmedo said just before sending Masterson to jail. But Mr. Masterson, you are not the victim here. However, we might just hear from Masterson again. One of his lawyers, Sean Hawley, promised that the legal battle is not over. And though we have great respect for the jury in this case and for our system of justice overall, sometimes they get it wrong," Holly said, and that's what's happened here. Mr. Masterson did not commit the crimes for which he has been convicted, and we and the appellate lawyers, the best and the brightest in the country, are confident that these convictions will be overturned. As of now, Masterson might be eligible for parole after serving 25 and a half years, but can be held in prison for life. Be sure to stick to the end to see the Sharknado actor languishing behind bars and the shameful reason why. If you thought that Masterson story was crazy, wait till you hear this next one. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more shocking prison videos. Skylar DeLeon Skylar DeLeon, also known as John Julius Jacobson Jr., became popular thanks to a role in the popular children's series The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. His career could have taken off, but he cut it short with his involvement in the robbery and murder of the owners of a yacht in 2004. Although DeLeon could have made a career in acting, he appeared in various children's shows in addition to his role in Power Rangers, he decided to join the U.S. Navy at the age of 20 instead. However, that didn't go particularly well for him. He was shortly discharged from service due to an unauthorized absence of 15 days. In 2002, DeLeon got married and had two children. As time went on, the couple began struggling with financial difficulties and soon found an easy solution in crime and robbery. Initially, DeLeon and his wife targeted small businesses, but eventually decided to start playing big. In 2004, they met a couple who owned a yacht up for sale. The couples went on a test run in Newport Beach Harbor, where DeLeon, along with his wife and three other accomplices, attacked the owners. They coerced them into surrendering ownership of their boat, then tied them up and threw them overboard, never to be recovered. Several years later, one of the accomplices confessed to the crime, which kick-started the lengthy ordeal against DeLeon and his wife. Although DeLeon was initially sentenced to death by lethal injection, Due to the moratorium in California, he will live the rest of his life on death row. His wife received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. While in prison, DeLeon has undergone gender change and now goes by the name of Skylar Preciosa DeLeon. Michael Jace Michael Andrew Jace is best known for his role as a cop in the TV series The Shield. Jace is currently serving a 40-year prison sentence for murdering his wife, April Jace. In 2016, he was found guilty of fatally shooting April in right at their Los Angeles home. 
The reason? Well, Jace's wife wanted a divorce, and he got obsessed with the idea that she must be cheating on him. On May 19, 2014, upon April's arrival home, he shot her. Jace then contacted emergency services to report the shooting. On top of that, Jace had a disturbing history of domestic violence. A close friend of Jace's first wife provided a sworn statement indicating that she witnessed him physically abuse his then-wife in 1997. Jace's history of violence was revealed in court records during his 2005 custody case involving his son with Jennifer Bitterman. After his first marriage, Jace wed April Jace in June 2003, but faced financial difficulties leading to a Chapter 13 bankruptcy declaration in March 2011, according to court records. Throughout his acting career, Jace often portrayed the good guys, such as law enforcement and military officers on television, appearing in episodes of Southland, another Los Angeles police drama series between 2009 and 2012. He also starred as Michael Jordan in the 1999 TV movie Michael Jordan, an American Hero. Jace is incarcerated at the Corcoran State Prison. Shannon Richardson Shannon Richardson is perhaps best known for her small roles in popular CW dramas such as The Vampire Diaries and The Walking Dead. And who could have thought that a mother of six would involve herself in posting ricin-laced letters to U.S. President Barack Obama and New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg? I know, we were shocked too. According to prosecutors, she ordered the ingredients online, then manufactured ricin and mailed three letters. Then she went to the police and tried to frame her estranged husband for the poisoning. As outlined in a federal indictment, one letter sent to Mr. Obama contained the message, What's in this letter is nothing compared to what I've got in store for you, Mr. President. Another letter addressed to Mr. Bloomberg, a proponent of gun control, included a threat to shoot in the face anyone attempting to confiscate the sender's guns. The third letter, containing ricin, was actually opened by Mark Glaze, who at the time was director of Mayors Against Illegal Guns, Bloomberg's group advocating for tougher gun control. Richardson claimed her husband had typed the letters before making her post them. Yet he was not charged. It was found that he was at work at the time and couldn't have printed the letters. I never intended for anybody to be hurt, she told the court before pleading guilty to possessing and producing a biological toxin. When pleading for leniency, Richardson apologized to the judge. I'm not a bad person. I don't have it in me to hurt anyone. She then asked the court for mercy and compassion and mentioned that being separated from her six kids is hard enough of a punishment. Following the plea deal, a federal judge sentenced her to the maximum punishment of 18 years and ordered to pay approximately $367,000 in restitution. She is currently held in a federal prison in Fort Worth, Texas, and is due to be released on November 18, 2028. Josh Duggar Former reality TV star Josh Duggar was arrested in April 2021 after explicit images and videos of children's torture and abuse were traced back to his computer. The investigation revealed that these materials were downloaded between May 14 and 16, 2019, onto a computer located in a car dealership owned by Duggar, prompting a federal search of wholesale motor cars in November 2019. After checking the videos, a seasoned FBI child exploitation investigator said it was in the top five of the worst of the worst. Initially, Duggar pled not guilty to one count of receiving and one count of possessing child exploitation materials. Duggar's defense lawyers claimed a former employee or hacker could have exploited Duggar's lax internet security to download the videos. Yet that story didn't pass. Eventually, a jury sentenced Duggar to more than 12 years in prison in December 2021. His original release date was set for August 12, 2032. However, it has since been extended multiple times for various violations, such as owning a smuggled cell phone, first by 10 days to August 22, 2032, and then by an additional six-plus weeks to October 2, 2023. 
Duggar seems to have a long-standing record of inappropriate behavior and abuse of minors. In 2015, TLC canceled 19 Kids and Counting amid allegations that he did inappropriate things to four of his sisters and an underage babysitter when he was 14 and 15 years old between 2002 and 2003. The abuse was first investigated in 2006 after police received a tip from a family friend. Yet, the case didn't go anywhere since the statute of limitations on any possible charges had expired. Will Hayden You might remember Will Hayden as a TV personality from Sons of Guns, which aired on the Discovery Channel from 2011 to 2014. The show, however, was canceled shortly after Hayden's arrest on charges of sexual assault and aggravated incest. The ex-Sons of Guns star received three life sentences plus 40 years for forcing himself onto two preteen girls in East Baton Rouge Parish, one in the early 1990s and the other in 2013 and 2014. He is not eligible for probation, parole, or a suspended sentence. On top of multiple women who testified against him, recounting Hayden sexually assaulted them, his own daughter came forward as well. She claimed that one night, Hayden came home drunk and forced himself on her, but she managed to fight him off. He never behaved inappropriately towards her since. Hayden denied the allegations, but still was unanimously convicted of two counts of aggravated rape and one count of forcible rape of two girls. It took the jury slightly over an hour to come to a decision. Prosecutor Sonia Cardia Porter called Hayden a master manipulator who lied to the jury in a pretty well-rehearsed performance. Ryan Grantham Young actor Ryan Grantham showed great promise from his performance in the CW series Supernatural to his appearance in the prominent show Riverdale. Who knows where his career could have taken him, but we'll never find out since Grantham ended it all with the cold-blooded murder of his mother. In 2020, the Vancouver star received life in prison with no possibility of parole for the first 14 years for shooting his 64-year-old mother Barbara Waite on March 31, 2020 at their home in Squamish, BC. According to reports, he repeatedly rehearsed his vile action, recording himself on a GoPro device sneaking up on her with a gun. He would then write how deeply sorry he is in his diary. After the killing, Grantham covered her body with a sheet, surrounded her with candles, and placed a rosary on a piano she loved playing. He then went out to buy marijuana and beer and spent the evening watching Netflix. And yet, he was planning to take far more lives, first plotting an attack against Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. He loaded his car with weapons, ammunition, and a map leading to the Prime Minister's residence, but ended up changing his plan and started preparing for a mass shooting at either the Lionsgate Bridge in Vancouver or his university. Thankfully, Grantham decided against that and handed himself over to the police instead. By that point, his mother's body had already been discovered by his sister, Lisa. Psychiatric assessments ruled that Grantham was mentally competent to stand trial and determined that he'd been suffering from clinical depression when committing the crime. While serving his prison sentence, the actor has been actively seeking psychiatric assistance and receiving professional counseling support. The psychiatrists agreed that at the time of this horrendous event, he, Grantham, was suffering from a major depressive disorder and a cannabis use disorder, among other things. Chris Johnson of Vancouver legal firm Johnson, Doyle, Nelson & Anderson, who represented the young actor at his sentencing before the British Columbia Supreme Court, said. At his sentencing, Grantham gave a speech to the judge indicating that he was going to dedicate the rest of his life to rehabilitating himself and helping other people, so he's on the way to getting better, Johnson added. Authorities are currently deciding where Grantham will serve the remainder of his sentence. Johnson had previously raised concern that his client could be abused in prison. Amy Locaine Back in 2010, Amy Locaine, who was a featured actress on the television show Melrose Place and also starred with Johnny Depp in Cry Baby, was involved in a deadly drunk driving accident in Montgomery. Fred Seaman, a New York attorney, was driving with his wife around 9 p.m. June 27th when Locaine crashed into him while going about 20 miles per hour 
over the 35 mile per hour speed limit. Fred's wife, Helene Seaman, died in the car, and her husband suffered serious injuries. It was later determined that Locaine's blood alcohol content was 0.23%, almost three times over the 0.08 legal limit, meaning she couldn't have expected any leniency from the judge. However, one would argue that the initial sentence of three years in state prison on charges of vehicular homicide and assault by auto was indeed overly lenient. After several appears, Judge Kevin Shanahan sentenced Locaine for a third time in February 2019 to five years in state prison, despite her being released on parole in June 2015. But if Locaine thought it was all over for her, well, not quite. In 2020, she was thrown back in jail for another eight years. Superior Court Judge Angela Borokowski handed down Amy's sentence, ordering a minimum mandatory period of six years, nine months, and 22 days. I'm not really sure what's going on, she told The Guardian journalist Simon Hattonstone from the Edna Mahan Correctional Facility for Women. I walk around in a daze. It's really messing with my mind. I never violated any rules. I never reoffended, and then to get thrown back in here? It's cruel. I feel like I'm being made an example of. James Ronco, Locaine's attorney, said that he just can't comprehend how, after five years later, they can reincarcerate a person who has already served three years. Her new eligible for parole date is December 20th, 2024, one day after her 53rd birthday. Joe Sun. Joe Sun has primarily starred in comedies, including his role as Odd Job, a parody of the James Bond character in the 1997 movie Austin Powers' International Man of Mystery as Random Task. But his life would remind you more of a horror film than a lighthearted comedy. An ex-MMA fighter turned to acting after failing to make a career in wrestling, appearing in the 1993 action movie Joshua Tree with Dolph Ludgren and Blood Fist V Human Target in 1994. His professional acting life could have very well made him a success, but not anymore, of course, since a series of horrendous crimes landed him a lifetime prison sentence without any possibility of parole. What did Sun do? Well, where to begin? He first pleaded guilty to a vandalism case in 2008 and was sentenced to 60 days in jail. It could have ended there, if not for one small condition. Sun was required to provide a DNA sample as part of the screening process. That DNA sample linked him to a horrifying unsolved case of kidnapping and forcible assault from the 1990s. He faced 275 years in prison but, due to the statute of limitations, was only charged with one felony count of torture. If you're curious what his original charges included, then there was a whole bouquet of crimes. However, even the sentencing for one count of torture still meant life in prison. At the time, we thought it was the last we'd ever heard from Sun, but not quite. In October 2011, he was accused of murdering his cellmate, a sex offender, Michael Thomas Graham, at Wasco State Prison in California, just a month into his sentence. He is now serving 34 years to life. Joe Exotic Although not a traditional actor, Joe Exotic is counted as a TV personality and an actor of his own kind by many. The former zookeeper, known for his role in the Netflix series Tiger King, is currently serving a prison sentence for attempting to hire two different men to murder welfare activist Carol Baskin. Joe Exotic, whose real name is Joseph Maldonado Passage, was initially sentenced to 22 years in prison back in 2020. Both Exotic and Baskin became famous thanks to their appearances in the Netflix documentary Tiger King which became a global sensation in 2020. During the recent court hearing, exotic supporters filled the courtroom, with some wearing animal print masks and shirts with the slogan, Free Joe Exotic. He was resentenced to 21 years behind bars. Exotic's legal team has announced plans to appeal both the resentencing and a petition for a new trial. He told a U.S. federal judge, please don't make me die in prison waiting for a chance to be free. The latest hearing came after a federal appeals court ruled last year that Exotic's prison term should be shortened. The appeal judges ruled that Exotic's two separate murder-for-hire convictions should be treated as a single offense, 
because both were related to arranging Ms. Baskin's death. Jen Shaw Jen Shaw, a former cast member of the reality television series The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, has just started serving her six-and-a-half-year prison sentence for orchestrating a nationwide telemarketing scam that defrauded elderly people out of tens of millions of dollars. Yikes! Shaw, who is no stranger to a luxurious, Kardashian-like lifestyle vividly shown in The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, pleaded guilty in July to being involved in a conspiracy to commit wire fraud and money laundering. This telemarketing operation specifically targeted older individuals and those struggling with the use of tech, deceiving them into purchasing services which, in reality, didn't exist. In a statement, Manhattan U.S. Attorney Audrey Strauss said the so-called business opportunities pushed on the victims by Shaw, Smith, and their co-conspirators were just fraudulent schemes motivated by greed to steal victims' money. Appearing in a New York City court, Shaw allegedly showed signs of remorse, saying, I knew it was wrong and many people were harmed. I am so sorry. She confessed to having collaborated with others to commit wire fraud and acknowledged that the scheme deceived victims, with more than 10 of them being over the age of 55. Shaw will now serve a 78-month term in a Texas prison, as well as forfeit $6.5 million and pay up to $9.5 million in restitution. Todd Chrisley and Julie Chrisley Todd Chrisley and his wife Julie Chrisley, who became famous on the USA Network's family reality series Chrisley Knows Best, are currently serving their sentences for evading taxes and committing bank fraud in June 2022. Back in 2019, the reality TV stars were accused of conspiracy to commit bank fraud, conspiracy to defraud the United States, and tax fraud. Additionally, Julie Chrisley was charged with wire fraud and obstruction of justice. The pair allegedly presented fraudulent documents to banks when applying for loans. Julie Chrisley submitted a fake credit report and bank statements while applying to rent a California residence, which Chrisley's failed to pay for a few months after moving into the property. The couple insisted on their innocence throughout the trials, with Todd Chrisley stating, We have nothing to hide and have done nothing to be ashamed of. They're serving different times slightly. Todd Chrisley will serve 12 years with 16 months on probation at the Sunshine State's Federal Prison Camp Pensacola, while his wife Julie will serve her seven-year sentence with 16 months on probation at the Federal Medical Center in Lexington. Their sentences, however, have since been reduced. Without a doubt, Todd and Julie are model incarcerated individuals who received exorbitant sentences. Jay Surgent, the pair's attorney, told Insider, I believe Todd is down to 10 years and Julie is now at 5 years. Drew Dreschel Drew Dreschel made an appearance on a variety of TV shows, including the Japanese show Sasuke and even won the title of American Ninja Warrior in season 11. But his sexual offenses sparked a legal case that led to his removal from the 12th season of the show and landed him a potential life in prison. Following an FBI investigation, the United States Attorney's Office, District of New Jersey, detailed Dreschel's crimes. Dreschel sought to have inappropriate relations with a minor girl and traveled to New Jersey with the intent to engage in illicit sexual conduct with that minor. He also enticed and coerced a minor to travel to Connecticut to engage in illicit conduct and engaged in online inappropriate communications with a minor and induced her to manufacture lewd images of herself and send them to Dreschel. The incident happened around January 2015 through December 2016 when the girl was only 14 years old. Dreschel, who met her during an after event attended by many contestants, didn't deny the act but argued he wasn't aware of her young age. He was charged with manufacture of lewd material involving minors, enticement of a minor to travel for illicit sexual conduct, travel with the intent to engage in illicit sexual conduct with a minor, and use of interstate commerce to entice a minor. The court denied him bail multiple times, and he eventually decided to plead guilty to two felonies. His sentencing was set for October 24th at 11 a.m. in Camden, New Jersey, although no official announcement regarding the verdict has since been made. 
As of now, it looks like the prison sentences may run consecutively to each other, meaning Drew could face 60 years in prison, down from the previous life in prison, although no option should be ruled out just yet. Harvey Weinstein who hasn't heard of the massive, exemplary case involving Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein? It now looks entirely possible that Weinstein will spend the rest of his life in prison, despite begging, please don't sentence me to life in prison, I don't deserve it, while getting another jail sentence of 16 years. Weinstein, age 70, will be serving this jail term once he finishes his 23-year sentence for a sexual misconduct conviction in New York back in 2020. This means it's quite likely that he will spend the remainder of his life behind bars. During his sentencing in a Los Angeles court, Weinstein pleaded for leniency. This is a made-up story. Jane Doe 1 is an actress. She can turn the tears on. Please don't sentence me to life in prison. I don't deserve it. There are so many things wrong with this case. There are too many loopholes, too many things wrong with this case. This is a setup. This is not the way to act in this situation. I beg your mercy. Hey, do we believe him? As much as Weinstein might think this is a witch hunt, we all know the movie mogul has many dark secrets, and he's been getting away with them for far too long. Weinstein was found guilty of sexual misconduct in New York back in February 2020, when over 80 women accused him of abuse, assault, and harassment. He was eventually transported from New York to a Los Angeles prison in July 2021. The producer is currently appealing the conviction and prison sentence he received in New York. His defense attorneys claimed that women willingly engaged in intimate acts with Weinstein since they believe it would advance their careers blaming it on a widespread casting couch culture in the film industry. The allegations against Weinstein fueled the Me Too movement, which empowered women to share their experiences of sexual harassment and abuse by powerful men. Kalen Walker Actor and rapper Kalen Walker is another man on our list accused of sexual misconduct. He appeared in the 2018 remake of the 1970s film Superfly and also starred along Halle Berry and Daniel Craig in the 2017 drama Kings before being arrested in 2018 for sexually assaulting four aspiring models. Allegedly, he contacted them promising lucrative work contracts and photo shoots, which was, as you might guess, just to disguise for his real motives. He was first held on more than $1 million bail and then released, only to be thrown back to prison in March 2019 when six new victims, including minors, testified. He was eventually sentenced to 50 years to life in state prison. Throughout the trial, his attorney stated that Walker maintains his innocence and did not receive a fair trial as many important issues were excluded by the court. In a report from NBC4, Walker's defense lawyer Andrew Flyer said, The pattern of Mr. Walker is to make false promises, and they bought it. Each one of these women voluntarily made their own decisions. He didn't force them. It's payback to Mr. Walker, and we're not going to let that happen. Zach Avery Actor Zach Avery, who appeared in a number of small, low-budget films, including Last Moment of Clarity and The White Crow, netted millions of dollars in a high-profile Ponzi scheme. But the money will be of little use to him, as he will spend the next 20 years in jail. The scheme raised a minimum of $650 million from over 200 investors. How did Avery pull it off? By deceiving them with fake film licensing deals. According to prosecutors, between 2014 and 2019, Avery managed to obtain hundreds of millions in loans for his film company, One in MM Capital LLC. He falsely assured his investors, including close friends and family members, that he'd use the funds to acquire film distribution rights for movies that would be licensed to major platforms like Netflix and HBO. In reality, Avery diverted some of the money to repay earlier investors and, of course, kept some for himself to make high-value purchases like his $6 million home. Avery's arrest took place in Los Angeles back in April, and he pleaded guilty to a federal charge of securities fraud in October. The actor has also been ordered to reimburse over $230.3 million to his victims. 
The complaint from the SEC disclosed that neither Avery nor his company had ever done legitimate business with HBO and Netflix. We allege that Horowitz promised extremely high returns and made them seem plausible by invoking the names of two well-known entertainment companies and fabricating documents, Michelle Wine Lane, director of the SEC's Los Angeles regional office, said in a statement at the time. We obtained an asset freeze on an emergency basis to secure for the benefit of investors what remains of the money raised by Horowitz. Jonathan Majors Now, Majors is not yet technically rotting in jail, but we just couldn't skip him on the list due to the high-profile nature of his current trial. Following multiple delays, the actor's domestic abuse trial is now set to take place on November 29th. During a fight with his girlfriend Grace Jabari in Manhattan on March 25th, he had allegedly put his hands on her neck. Majors was first arrested on a variety of charges, including strangulation, and was released later that day with an order of protection. The strangulation charge has since been dropped, and he now faces charges of misdemeanor assault, aggravated harassment, attempted assault, and harassment. Jabari received a temporary order of protection, preventing Majors from contacting her in any way. Majors' legal team has initiated a high-profile defense, asserting that the actor is a victim of racism and domestic violence, while accusing prosecutors of withholding evidence. Right after the arrest, Majors' lawyer, Priya Chowdhury, referred to her client as completely innocent. Unfortunately, this incident came about because this woman was having an emotional crisis, for which she was taken to a hospital yesterday, she said in a statement. The NYPD is required to make an arrest in these situations, and this is the only reason Mr. Majors was arrested. As it turns out, Majors has a history of being emotionally abusive to romantic partners. Rolling Stone cited more than a dozen sources who claimed that he strangled one of his ex-partners and was emotionally abusive to another one. There are also reports of him being aggressive during his time at Yale Drama School and on various sets. Majors has so far suffered much reputational damage, including being dropped by his talent agency Entertainment 360 and by his PR firm. If convicted, he could face criminal penalties, including up to one year in prison. We'll see how things play out. Stay tuned. Jared Scott Fogel Fogel was widely recognized as an actor and the spokesperson for Subway, becoming famous as the Subway guy for appearing in over 300 commercials, showcasing his dramatic weight loss of over 200 pounds, all thanks to a diet of Subway sandwiches. Fogel never got to fully explore his acting career, which has arguably taken a surprising turn as he is now the subject of a new ID documentary titled Jared from Subway, Catching a Monster. In 2015, Russell Taylor, the director of the Jared Foundation, Fogel's nonprofit organization focused on raising awareness about childhood obesity, was arrested for possessing lewd materials involving children. Taylor's arrest made Fogel a subject of interest for police. In July 2015, his home was raided, and it soon turned out that Taylor had traded those images and videos with Fogel. In November 2015, Fogel was hit with a 15-year prison sentence, and with 188 months for each count, and paid $100,000 in restitution to each of the 14 victims, totaling $1.4 million. Fogel is currently incarcerated at the Federal Correctional Institution, with a minimum of 13 years to be served before he becomes eligible for parole. His earliest date of release will be March 24, 2029, and he'll be required to register as a sex offender and undergo treatment for sexual disorders. Click on this video to see 19 celebrities currently rotting in jail. See you there!